On days when nothing happens, a jet loafs overhead, an hourglass of smoke. South Orange poet David Tucker loves the everyday language of Robert Frost and the dailiness of the ancient Chinese poets. That makes a lot of sense, since Tucker is also a journalist. He's deputy managing editor at the Star-Ledger in Newark, part of the team that won the Pulitzer Prize for breaking news covering Governor James E. McGreevy's resignation and the scandal surrounding it. His first book of poetry is called Late for Work. We met up with Tucker at work in the Star-Ledger newsroom. Every day I pick up a newspaper, I see elements of poetry. Uh, I mean, you don't see poems in newspapers, but you see poetic writing. Star Ledger, Dave Tucker. And by that, I don't mean flowery, fancy okay. stuff, but uh, language that is used uh, with a kind of clarity that is memorable, uh, and a kind of efficiency that is, uh, makes the reader stop and pause and think. Oh, he did? Oh, that's good. Because I heard the photographer got tossed out. A lot of good newspaper stories have elements of poetry in them, I think. Journalism is about what the facts tell us, and poetry is about what the facts don't tell us. Poetry is about a different kind of news. You take a step back when you're writing poetry. When you're, when you're in, involved in putting out a newspaper, you're right in the thick of it. So where are you headed now? So I guess it does provide a little bit of perspective. When I come to work, there's a wall that goes up. and. Uh, I don't deliberately uh, think about poetry. I, I may, I a, at you, lunch, I open a phone. book and read something, or there may be a little bit of downtime. Uh, but for the most part, it, there's a fairly strong demarcation for me. Um, and, and if I started probably thinking about poems while I was in the newsroom, and vice versa, it would be maddening. Um, so I like there's a kind of clarity keeping them separate, for me, anyway. This is the editorial wing of the newspaper, and absolutely nothing gets done here. Any questions about him? This is <laughs> Bob Wall just came back from Iran. It's a wonderful series. You pick up things in the newsroom that you're not aware of until the next day or a month later. You're starting to write, and something happened, so it clings to your consciousness. An image will have a kind of staying power that will surprise you when you come when you get ready to write. So things do linger in, in your memory, uh, in your consciousness, in your unconsciousness that, that come up when you're ready to, when you get particularly focused to write a poem. Um, surprises happen uh, and little green men seem like they're handing your notes and you look at it and you say, oh, that's, that's from, that happened in the newsroom, that's right. Uh, so that does happen and that's, that's sort of fantastic when it does. Readings are exhilarating. I'm usually a little nervous when I first start out, but then, you know, I start reading the poems and I think something clicks and says, oh yeah, this is my stuff. I know how this goes. It's an extraordinary feeling, too, to be there with an, an audience of people who come to hear poetry. It's, uh, it's very special. This is a poem called, And This Just In. This is a poem that uh, arose from one of those days in the newsroom when uh, a lot of the big bosses are gone. Uh, they're off at an editorial conference um, on an airplane to California, perhaps. And the inmates are running the asylum. And uh, reporters and editors like to sit around and talk about what they would do with a newspaper. If we just had control of this damn rag for an afternoon, we could change it. And so you get some really crazy ideas. And if you're an editor who's also a poet, then maybe you have your own ideas of what ought to be in the paper. And this just in. Those footfalls on the stairs when the night shift went home, the sunlight fanning through the dinosaur's rib cage, the janitor's sneeze. We're asking questions. We'd like to know more. The moth in the clock tower at City Hall, 
the 200th generation to sleep there. We may banner that story across page one. And in Metro, we're leading with the yawn that traveled city council chambers this morning, then slipped into the streets and wound through the city. The editorial page will decry the unaccountable boredom that overtook everyone around three in the afternoon. Features praises the slowness of moonlight, making its way around the house, staying an hour in each chair. The inertia of calendars, not turned since winter. A watchman humming in the parking lot at Broad and Market. We have that with a sidebar on the bronze glass of a whiskey bottle, cracking into cheap jewels under his boots. A boy walking across the ball field an hour after the game. We're covering that silence. We have reporters working hard. We're getting to the bottom of all of it. Thank you.